On this episode of Mahjong Nosh and Such, I'm going to make a variation of Stromboli. It was such a hit, everybody loved it, so I'm going to make a Philly cheesesteak Stromboli. All the ingredients for the dough are behind me. We're going to put that together and let it sit for 30 minutes. Then we'll prepare the filling. The filling is going to be, of course, cheese. We have mozzarella provolone. Then we're going to layer some roast beef. And I'm going to slice green pepper and onion. We're going to saute that separately. And then we'll put the stromboli together, roll it up, bake it, and slice. It's going to be really good. Well, it looks good. I haven't had it before, so we'll see what happens. Let's get started with that dough. So here I have two cups of warm water. And you just add everything together. I'm going to put in a tablespoon of instant yeast. This is a teaspoon of sugar, two teaspoons of salt, three tablespoons of oil. This is olive oil. Then you add five cups of flour. I'm going to give this a mix initially. I think I'll go until there's about a cup left and then I'll add it slowly because I don't want too much flour. a little bit sticky so I'm going to add just a little at a time until we have a semi clean bowl still pretty sticky we might need the whole five cups today. We needed every bit of that five cups today. The last time I made this, I only needed about four and a half cups. Okay, so I'm gonna need this for five minutes. Good. It's a little sticky still, but I think it's going to be all right. It's definitely stickier than it was before. So I'm going to work with it as it is, and we'll see if it makes a difference. <coughs> So 
So I'm just going to form it into a ball. So now this is in a nice ball. I'm going to drizzle some olive oil in here and we're going to sit it out for 30 minutes covered with a towel. I'm just going to roll the dough in there so that it's kind of coated a little bit so it doesn't dry out. There we go. Okay, 30 minutes. While the dough is rising, I'm going to saute the veggies. So I'm going to use a half of an onion and a half of a green pepper. I have learned a secret about cutting onions. If you don't breathe through your nose, the onion fumes won't make your eyes water. I didn't cut myself, I just pinched it in the little stand here. But it still hurt. All right, I'm gonna set that aside for a minute. I'm just gonna use probably half of these onions and I will find another use for the rest of them. I love onions, even raw, I like them raw. So there's the onion. And now some of this didn't get sliced, so I'll just chop that up real quick. So for this, I'm just going to cut this by hand. I'll use the rest of this for a salad. Oh, this one didn't get cut very well. Okay, that's probably pretty good. So there are the peppers and the onions. Well, maybe a little, well, no, I'm going to stop there because I think somebody doesn't really like green pepper. So I'll go light on the green pepper. Use whatever veggies you like. That will be for a salad. Okay, so I'm going to drizzle some olive oil in the pan and put a little bit of butter in the pan and I'll saute the onions and the green pepper until they're tender and maybe just a little bit brown. Once the veggies are softened, I'm going to season them with salt and pepper just to taste. I'm gonna add a little of this to Tony Chachery's. My husband likes spice. If you don't like spice, you can omit this. Now I've never made this before, so I'm gonna test it on my family, but I think it's gonna be pretty good.
count down 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Here it is. Quite a bit bigger than it was before. I'm going to just put a little teeny bit of flour down. It was a little sticky. So let's see what happens. So you just want to press it out to get all the air bubbles out. I think that's pretty good. I'm going to form it into a bit of a rectangle here. And then we'll roll it. Okay. There's my roller. I think that's pretty good. I'm just going to square it off just a little bit. Okay, there it is. Now, we're going to make an egg wash. Forgot my whisk. I forgot my brush. We're going to brush it so that the cheese sticks to it. And when you brush it, you leave about an inch border. This is just to be very, very light. That's good. Now for the cheese. That's probably good. Now I want to add the roast beef. I've had my oven preheating to 350 for a little while now. We need about six slices of provolone. Let's see here. I'm just going to temporarily lay it down. Okay, now I'm going to, I think I'm going to half it. No, I'll just lay it out like this. One, two, three. Like I say, I've never made this before. Now I'm going to do more roast beef. Roast beast. And we'll do more of this. Boy, that's not very much roast beast. I'm going to put three pieces across. That looks a little better. The 
think we'll put some extra in the very center. Now let's add the onions and the peppers. I'm kind of thinking this spoon is not going to work. I'm just going to use my fingers. Because these onions are kind of clumping together a little bit. We don't want clumping. Kind of spread it around a little bit. Because that's good flavor. Let's see here. I'm kind of thinking this is a lot of dough on the edge here. I'm going to cut some of this off. Oops, pizza cutter. I'll make some little rolls out of that. Okay, here we go now. This is good. So we'll start rolling. I don't know. I think I might put a little extra cheese on there. More cheese. Seems a little dry. I'm going to turn this around. There we go. Now we'll lift and pinch. Lift and pinch. Then you lift. This is a lot of dough. A lot of dough. So I'm going to Okay, so now I will lift and poke that in there, then lift and pinch. Same thing on this side, poke it in there. Poke. Then lift and pinch carefully. It's seeming a little bit thin on the top there. Feels a little thin under there. So we'll get it on the pan. Flip it kind of here. Let's see. Oh. Felt a little thin on there, but I think it's going to be okay. Okay, nice. Let me wash up real quick. We need to cut vents, two inch vents it says, just in the top layer. The last time I did a two inch slit or vent, it came apart. So I'm going to do a one inch. Now we'll brush it with egg wash. And then I want to season the top. Just do this. 
this. Here's a garlic and herb. Let's try that. Okay, so we're ready to stick it in the oven. And I believe we had it in there for 18 minutes before. I'll have to reference the recipe to be sure. So in it goes. Fifteen to twenty minutes. I'll set it for fifteen minutes and we'll keep an eye on it. In the meantime, I'm going to make a few rolls, clean this up, and then when that's ready to come out of the oven, I'll let you see how it looks and I can tell you it's going to look really nice because I have made a version of this before and it was wonderful. So we're just trying a new version. Let's check on that stromboli. It was looking pretty light. It is sizzling a little and it's coming apart a bit on the bottom. I got to learn how to fix that, but I'm going to cook it for another 10 minutes keep an eye on it it needs to be nice and browned on top it's looking pretty doughy right now so we'll wait another 10 15 minutes it's starting to smell really good so i think i'm going to take a peek at it It's still quite white, but I know it's cooking because it's coming apart on the bottom. I saw another recipe where instead of rolling it like a scroll, they basically folded the back over the top and then the front that way. So almost like just a tri-fold. So next time I make it, I think I'm going to try that and see if it doesn't come apart. I don't get it. I pinched the dough. It'll still be tasty. And I'll try to press it together a little bit. We can kind of fudge it. I think it's ready to come out. And it's a mess. Look at that. It exploded. All right. I may be able to rescue it, I don't know, but it smells delicious. Okay, can you see that? It looks good on this side, but it kind of exploded out the side. I'm going to let it sit, and when it's cool, I'm going to see if I can tuck it back in. I'm going to try to tuck it in if I can, kind of lift and tuck maybe. I'm just going to kind of tuck it under. We'll see what it looks like when we cut into it. It looks pretty good at the moment. Over there, it's pretty gnarly though. 
Okay, we'll let it rest and then we'll cut into it. I'm going to try to lift it and move it over onto the cutting board. Okay, I'm going to do something a little different. I'm going to cut it right here because it's trying to break right there. Look at that. What do you think of that? That looks pretty good. So we'll let this sit for just a couple more minutes and then we'll plate and have a taste. It's been sitting out for a little while so I think we can go ahead and slice it. Looks pretty tasty to me. Took a little while to cook this one and I had to do a little bit of repair on it. But I think it's gonna be all right. It's still pretty hot in there. See that steam coming off of that? All righty. I think I'll make myself a little piece right here. What do you think? Does that look tasty? If you like roast beef, I think you would love this. It smells delicious. Oh, it smells really good. So here's a little taste test. I'm just gonna make it a little more manageable. And of course I forgot napkins again, but this looks like a pretty good bite. Here we go. We're gonna need napkins, but I'm telling you what, that is a good stromboli. Just like Philly cheesesteak. And that homemade bread, that just makes it, oh, very, very good. Delicious, fresh. The cheese is awesome. You can taste the pepper and the onion. And I was a little afraid I didn't have enough peppers and onions, but it was really the perfect amount half a pepper, half an onion, perfect amount. It's not overkill and there's just enough flavor there. Mmm, wow. Mmm. Mmm. The cheese kind of cooked into the bread. So it almost tastes like cheesy bread. Oh gosh, it's really, really good. Look at that bite. Cheesy goodness. Mm-hmm. Let me turn that off.
So I think this is a keeper. I just have to figure out how to keep it from coming apart. I'm not sure what to do about that. Maybe I should toothpick it or get like a big skewer and skewer it. Write in the comment section if you know how to fix that. I would love the help. I would appreciate it very much. So I think this is a keeper recipe. I would make this for Mahjong Nash for sure. It's really, really good. Give it a try yourself and let me know what you think. If you like this video, give me a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed to my channel yet, consider subscribing and click the bell so you get notification for when I post new videos. That way you won't miss out on any new recipes for Mahjong Nash and such. Between now and the next episode, may all your picks be keepers. I need a napkin.